So in one of the previous videos, we've created this form trigger uh, together with the associated trigger component. Now, I'm still not entirely sure I'm happy with the way these work. And this is because if we go to the trigger, we have this template where we are wrapping the entire button within a span tag. But what if I wanted to change it to a button tag, for instance, or anything else? This wouldn't be possible with the current setup. So what we're going to do in this video is, is do a little bit of the refactoring and we are going to convert this trigger component into a renderless component when we only passing through the functionality to the scope without actually rendering any output as HTML. And the first refactoring that I'm going to do is going to be applied to this processing property. And this is because this specific component as well as Ajax Scholar have the same property and they both set it to true or false. So what I'm going to do is create a new mixing called processor. And from within this component, I'm going to remove the template. We only need the script section. I'm going to go back to the trigger and cut this data method and override the existing data on this new component, uh, removing this props method as well. Then for the methods, I'm going to create two. First one will be start processing, which will simply set this flock to true. So this processing equals true. And then we're going to have stop processing, which will reverse it. So this processing equals false. And that's everything from within this mixing, we can now save and close it. And let's quickly replace it within uh, actually add it to this Ajax color. So import processor from processor, and let's use it as a mixing. So mixings processor. And now what I'm going to do is remove this data from within this Ajax color. And I'm going to replace this processing true and processing false to uh, start processing. And then stop processing for this setting it to false. So stop processing. There we go. So that's our Ajax call updated back to the trigger. We've already removed the data uh, method. Let's import it as well. So import processor from it's going to go two levels up, mixings processor. And again, let's add it to the mixings that we are using. So processor. And if we open our form trigger dot view component, now what we need to do here, we are uh, setting this processing manually. So that's going to be start processing. And this one is going to be stop processing, stop processing. So now if we go back to our trigger, let's cut everything that we have within this template and let's remove this template completely. Now, if we go back to our form buttons detached, what I'm going to do is paste it all within the first form trigger. Let's just fix the indentation here. Now for the class, I'm going to apply the classes that I have associated with this resting CSS class. So it's going to be just a class and it's expanded button. Click trigger will still stay the same. Uh, we can now remove this resting CSS class. And if we go back to the trigger, let's remove this uh, property. If we go back, uh, next thing I want to do is to make sure that we don't have this uh, named slots. So what I'm going to change this to will be just a spun, which will be shown when processing. Uh, otherwise, we are going to show this other spun. It's going to be a spun as well. And we're going to use V else statement. So this one shows when the processing flag isn't is set to false, this one will show otherwise. So closing span as well. So that all works fine for the first button, we will replace the other ones once we have the whole implementation done. But let's work with this one first. Now because we are now going to be building our HTML for the button ourselves, we don't really need to pa pass this is submit flag because what this flag does is if we go back to the form trigger, the only thing it does is set this processing to true or false. We can set it to true or false and it will be down to us whether we want to show this processing button or not from within the HTML. So what I'm going to do is going back to our form trigger, I'm going to refactor this created 
segment here. So rather than having this that way, I'm going to remove the need for check for this is submit, and I'm going to call this method directly because it's a method without using brackets. I can pass it through as the second argument to this listener. And the same is going to go for this stop processing. So we don't need to have this anonymous. Uh, sorry, we don't have to have this closure based callback. We can just pass the name of this method uh, straight through. OK, so going back to our trigger, now we can remove this is submit property as well because we no longer use it. Now, because we are building our own HTML, we can remove this working CSS class because if we want to have any status when the, the request is being processed, then we will just provide this else statement for the processing uh, status. So if we go back to the trigger, we can now completely remove this CSS uh, class from the computed, which means this entire computed section can be removed. And all we are left with is just a single method, the created, as well as props and mixings. And that's pretty much all we need for now. We will add the render method in just a moment. But before we do this, let's just go back to our form trigger. And what I want to do here is you can see that we are checking from within the trigger, we're checking if the disabled flag is set to true. And if it is, we just return to make sure that nothing happens when user uh, calls this method. Now, this isn't going to be the only instance that we're going to be checking this for this. Uh, and because of this, what I want to do is to create a new method on our trigger component. We are going to call it conditional trigger. So conditional trigger. And what I'm going to do here from within this method, I will call the this trigger method. But before I will do this, I will perform this check. So I'm going to cut this if is disabled from within the trigger paste it into this conditional trigger. And now this check will only live in a single location rather than having this called from every single trigger method. OK, now let's uh, recompile all the assets. So npm run dev. And once everything has recompiled, if we preview everything in your browser, you'll see that our buttons are now gone and we get a bunch of errors in a console. And they say that property or method trigger is not defined. Then we have property or method processing is not defined and so on. And this is because if we go back to the editor, you'll see we are using processing property. We are using this trigger method, but we have no access to it at all. We pass this. HTML as a slot to this form trigger, but we don't have any template within the trigger anymore. So in order for us to be able to access those properties and methods from within the slot, we need to make them available through the use of the render method. So render method on our trigger component and from within the render method, we are going to return the scoped slot. So return this sculpt slot and the default, which is a method that we can call passing an object with arguments that we want the slot to have available our properties, which we will be able to use from within this slot. So the first one we want to pass through is disabled flag. And this will come from this is disabled. Then we are going to have processing this processing. And lastly, we are going to have a trigger method. But rather than passing the instance of the trigger method, we're going to pass this conditional trigger. So this conditional trigger. This way, every time someone clicks on the button and this trigger method will be called, it will actually refer to this conditional trigger by first checking whether the button is currently disabled. And if it is, it will do nothing. Otherwise, it will call the trigger on a given component. OK, so that's everything. If we now save it and recompile everything within our terminal, and once everything has compiled, if we go back to our editor, because the other thing that we need to do now for us to be able to access these properties, we need to use a slot scope attribute. And using distracting assignment, we are going to gain access to those properties that we're passing through. Let's just split screen here and hide the browser on the left hand side. So we'll have disabled as the first item, then we have processing. And lastly, we have trigger. Okay, now if I close this 
trigger file let's put these items on new lines so starting with the disabled let's add this class dynamically so colon class disabled it will only be shown and let's wrap it with the brackets it will only be shown when the disabled is set to true so uh, disabled disabled class will be applied to this element when the disabled property is set to true then we have a trigger which we are accessing already uh, through from within this uh, slot and the same for the processing if we now save it and preview everything in a browser refresh the page we still have a bunch of errors but these are now referring to the other two buttons which we didn't refactor yet but as you can see our submit button is now displaying here if i hit uh, if I click the button, you'll see we get the action executed. Uh, if we refresh the page, it goes back to where it was. If we go back to the editor, one other thing I want to do is to add vclock to it to make sure that this button doesn't show until the component is ready. Now, if you are using Internet Explorer or any other older browser, then assignment, this distracting assignment may not work, in which case you would replace it rather with the rather than with the object, just with some sort of property that you can access from within a slot. So let's call this one props. And now what we need to do is prefix all these properties with this props. So props, disabled, props trigger, and the same goes for this props processing. Now this will work with Internet Explorer and any other older browser. OK, now that our component is completed, we can copy this content of the first button slot and let's go down to our other buttons. First thing we're going to do is remove this resetting CSS class and let's inline it all. We can actually do this on the first button. Let's just go back to the first button as well because we are oh, forgotten to remove this is submit property which no longer exists on this component and yeah looks a little bit cleaner and let's paste uh, what we've just copied and let's fix the indentation for all these elements and here as well there we go now uh, this one has uh, that was alert class so alert button with all the same properties the only thing that we are going to replace here is this reset label with the icon and we can remove this template let's copy this and paste it into this second button let's remove these things first inline it all and if we paste it in this one had warning button class and now the label with the icon clear let's remove this template okay if we save it and preview everything actually before we do this before previewing anything in a browser now we have this vcloak which is all good but actually this vcloak rather than having this on our uh, slot let's put it on the component directly uh, so let's do it like this so the component actually doesn't show until it is ready okay let's refresh everything in the browser you'll see the buttons are now showing submit submit reset reset clear button clears everything works the same way as before but now we have uh, the flexibility to have it however we want there's there's nothing that comes from the component itself that will actually produce the visual representation of the button so we can format it however we want let's say we want to change it to a button Let's just change it to a button tag, button, and it's going to be, say, type button, and that's going to work as well. If we go to, back to the browser, you can see the button still works, and regardless of what sort of tag or styling we are using on it, I'm just going to reverse it back to what it was. So the truth is, it is a little bit more verbose. As you can see, we have a few more lines uh, of code here, a few more tags and so on. But at the end of the day, uh, the flexibility that it gives you, I think it's it's worth it. That's what I think. If you want to, obviously, you can still wrap it within another component if you don't want to see all these spans and so on. I'll keep it this way because this will allow us to play with this however, however we want. Even if you want to have an image here, for instance, you could potentially have an image tag which you click and that submits the form. Okay, so that's our buttons. There's another thing I wanted to refactor. If we open our browser on the left-hand side, let's open our base input. Now, base input at the moment, 
if we scroll up, you'll see we have this wrapper CSS style and wrapper CSS class. This is what I want to get rid of. And this is because if I open our, let's go to main and let's open this index, I'm going to go to the first, uh, first input that we have. If I apply, let's say, class to it, and I'm going to say test class, if we now go back to the browser, refresh it, and let's inspect this first input you'll see that this test class has been applied to it anyway so in other words we don't necessarily need to have it because even if we don't have this property this css class will be applied to it the same goes for the style so if i was to say a uh, style say a background uh, let's make it black if I save it and preview it in a the browser, there you go. You can see already that it's black behind the input and the style is also applied to this wrapper. And this is because the first item within a template will get all the properties that you will actually apply to this component. So meaning any standard attributes that you will associate with any given uh, component will be affecting directly the first item within the template so let's remove this wrapper css class and let's remove this wrapper css style we will need this wrapper error css class because this one is being shown conditionally uh, same goes for the validation we need this uh, wrapper error css style also is also needed because this is conditional but the default ones we don't need. So what I'm going to do is now refactor this computed wrapper CSS class. We are going to get rid of this first array and we put it all within this object. We only are interested in this invalid, uh, this error CSS class. Same goes for CSS style. So if we just replace with just the object like this and remove everything else. And we could also inline this one here. So let's just do that and that's everything in terms of refactoring this base inputs and if we now save and close everything let's recompile and check if everything still works fine and there are no errors which is good if we hit submit that's good reset resets and clear clears so everything seems okay if you'd like to find out more about a views scope slots and navigate to view.js.org on the left hand side under components in depth slots scope slots uh, the other thing you might want to check is the render functions which is again under reusability and composition render functions and jsx if we scroll down you'll see slightly different approach to the render uh, methods uh, they are using create element which is also another way of uh, dealing with the renderless components however we when rendering any wrapper that's why i've just used code slot directly